Hey guys, um, it's day 43, and I wish I could give you guys better news, but I can't. It's been an ongoing uh, failure in these parts, but at least I'm still here with you guys. Um, uh, no excuses, really. Uh, I'm just finding it so well. Let me say that. I have found it so hard. Uh, so hard. For really the past year, you guys know. Um, I just keep failing, and the more that you fail, and the more that you give in, um, you being me, the easier and quicker I am to do it again and again and again and again. Just like when you gain momentum going the positive direction, the more you tell yourself no, the more you accomplish, the more you you go in a positive way, the easier it is to keep going down that way. And I have <clears throat> just continued to, excuse me, I'm sorry, I have a bit of a cold right now. Um, just the more I've just continued to go down this dark path, the deeper and deeper and deeper I am into it. And I've also just continually perpetuated these kind of negative thoughts and untruths that I've really kind of brainwashed myself into believing things that aren't even necessarily true. For instance, like that I need junk food to be happy or that uh, food is the only answer uh, to relieving my stress or a, a big one I tell myself all the time is that it's better that my kids have a good mommy um, than it is for me to try to deprive myself and be a total biatch um, and you know obviously all the excuses surrounding working out and just being uncomfortable. So I started having thoughts yesterday um, about challenging the beliefs that I have about myself. Challenging my um, I'm sorry, I just totally lost my train of thought. Um, <sighs> challenging what I really think about things. Like, do I really hate to shower that much? Why? And, you know, actually putting into place showering every day and really seeing how horrible it is. Um, or going for a walk every day. Or turning off the TV. Or, you know, all these things that that I believe I either hate or that I can't live without, like actually challenging that and just seeing how it feels. But I am I'm so fragile and weak right now in my failure that it's you know, it, it's really hard for me to challenge myself right this second. Um I have had some good days here and there since I talked to you last as far as staying on the calories, but most of the time it has just been a binge. And it really makes me sick to make this video, honestly. But I feel <clears throat> like it would be a total, it would be totally worse of a cop out to not make a video at all and just be MIA for six months or whatever than it is to just come here and just keep telling you the same story. Although I hate doing that. Um, and I'm sure that you guys are sick of it. And if you are, I don't blame you for not watching anymore. Um, but, you know, at least I feel like there is this commitment here that I do need to maintain. So, I went to a birthday party at my... Um, 
friend's house. One of the very few people I can call a friend. Um, and even though I don't really even talk to her that much, she lives over where we used to live, about 45 minutes away. Anyway, it was her daughter's birthday. I told myself before I went that I was, like, I felt resolved in the morning. I felt like I was going to deprive myself, okay, deny myself, that I wasn't going to give in to this addiction, that I was going to be strong and that I was going to behave myself. And I went there and I swear all I did the entire time I was there was eat. And how that even happens, it, like, it really flabbergasts me. I mean, I don't want to say, like, oh, I wasn't in control or, like, I was totally checked out. I mean, I was there. Obviously, I was making the conscious decisions every time I was picking up something to eat. Um, but I don't know how I can somewhat feel resolved. Or, I'm sorry, that does, that's a total oxymoron. I don't even know how I can feel resolved... Um, or think that I'm resolved and then immediately totally cave. <sighs> Let me talk about something positive for a minute. So I've been going to counseling. I've had two sessions so far and um, I'm going to try to go every week. The provider and the Therapy so far is not exactly what I would hope for as far as I really wanted something very, very deep. I really wanted to really delve into these feelings and these thoughts, um, the deep issues, you know, and like really start pounding away at whatever those are and really looking for real solutions and breaking down my um, you know, my distortions and, and trying to replace those and having, a um, somebody that's going to, um, that's going to dig and that's really going to give me a lot of advice. And I don't have that with this, um, social worker. Unfortunately, I mean, she has a lot of experience, I guess. Um, and she is nice. She's pleasant. Uh, and so I'm going to continue to go to her. And, of course, I've only met with her twice, so maybe things are just slow to get started. But I just feel like she's not really going to be in it to, like, really delve deeply and, like, really bestow all her knowledge onto me. I just feel like, again, it's just more of the same of kind of complaining about my life and... She has given me a couple little homework assignments, though, which is good. I mean, that's the one good thing. But I just really want her to break apart my thinking, break apart what I'm saying, call me out on my bullshit, say you need to stop doing that, and this is what you need to do. Um, and that's not exactly what's happening. Uh, the first week, she did say that... Um, given whatever survey or whatever she had me take that I meet the criteria with that survey at least for symptoms of major depression I think is what she said so I don't know if she can actually diagnose me or what but I think that's what we're working with and she assigned me a gratitude journal so I had to come up with at least three things to five things a day uh, for a week that I felt good about that had happened that day or that I had experienced or gotten done or whatever. So that was good um, to focus on the positives. I think that was healthy. I also bought this, which is Mom's One Line a Day. Uh, it's a five year memory book. So, oh my gosh, I just flipped to my birthday. That is so weird. Anyway, so you put 2015, 2016, 17, 18, 19. So you just go day by day by day. And then that way you can reflect, like, where were we a, 
exactly a year ago today or two years ago today what were the kids doing so this is really I'm just gonna keep track of what the kids did that day and any new things or noteworthy things so I think that that's been good for me too every day to just kinda reflect on the kids and anything that they've accomplished or whatever so that was the first week and then the second week I saw her this like last Tuesday or Wednesday and she we talked about the food a lot and just the total lack of self-control in most of the areas of my life and she suggested that I before I move to these behaviors before I like lose control either with my temper or with my eating to take like a just a split time out and do something else and what she asked me to do was like if I was working with the kids and I felt like I was gonna lose my temper she asked that I leave the room take 10 deep breaths and then come back so because she said a change of environment and obviously the deep breaths or whatever could help I haven't done that but I have been a lot better with the kids and but I feel like that's mostly because I've been just letting myself eat whatever I want whenever I want which is a stress reliever for me I mean I haven't taken the deep breaths or whatever but I mean yeah I didn't do what I was supposed to do there and mostly that's just because of laziness I don't want to have to get up to go into another room it's a problem it's cyclical it's a sick cycle um and the second thing was that if I felt like I was going to cave and eat something that I shouldn't eat or that I ultimately didn't want to eat, that I should uh, drink a full glass of water and then like kind of give it a minute and then kind of reassess where I was. And I haven't done that either. So yet another failure seemingly on me. <sighs> Um, so anyway, another positive thing other than the counseling, which I think is a step in the right direction, is that I have been meditating every night for, <clears throat> I think it's been, it's been at least a week. I think it might be even like 10 days now. I will tell you guys, I've been using a YouTube channel. There's lots of them on YouTube. You can search for um, guided hypnosis, guided meditation, uh, maybe guided visualization, uh, things like that. Uh, if you've never, if you've never done it before, I really suggest that you try it. Um, I love meditating, but like the thought of just like, oh, I'm just going to sit in a quiet room and I'm just going to like repeat a mantra or like just focus on my breathing, like that's, I'm not there yet. Um, hold on, I'm having problems with my internet connection. I wanted to tell you guys what this channel was that I've been using for the, um, the meditation. But anyway, the guided meditation is different than that because you're actually, it's like a hypnotic kind of voice, but it's not like hypnotic, like going to make you do anything crazy or anything like that. Um, but it's just a soothing voice with some kind of soothing music. And what they usually do, uh, from my experience, which I have done it off and on for a few years, because when I got the attacking anxiety and depression um, system or whatever, which was like a set of tapes to conquer those kinds of things anyway it was included in there a, um, a guided meditation so I've done that for a while too um, let me go to this channel anyway what they usually do usually have you lay down with your eyes closed in a comfortable position and then they have you start taking deep breaths and then they do a what do they call it Ah. Sorry. I can't edit this video. My apologies. All right, there we go. Ah, uh, they do a 
This is a stress-related symptom, I think. Inability to think of the right words at the right time. It's like almost like a memory loss thing. Progressive muscle relaxation technique. That's what it is. So you kind of go through your whole body and like imagine each one of your muscles in order, whatever they say, relaxing. And then they usually do some kind of guided imagery, which is like, imagine this, imagine yourself here, imagine this, imagine that. Um, so that's what the gist of it is. And I find it really, really helpful if I could take a time out in a stress is in a stressing period and do this kind of medica medication meditation I feel like it would be really helpful but in just regards to my sleep I haven't really changed anything else except for this and I've been sleeping terrifically and like it's almost like I don't want to jinx it but I swear to you every night that I've been doing this which has been every night for the past seven to ten days as soon as I'm done with this meditation, I literally roll over and I go right to sleep. And that's usually not the case. Even if I go to sleep quickly on a, you know, without the meditation, I mean, that's still a few minutes that I'm, that I'm laying there, you know, thinking about my to-do list or whatever. With this, I don't do that. By the time I'm done and I roll over, I'm not thinking anything except for what I just experienced, which is like a split second, and then I'm asleep. And I haven't been waking up in the middle of the night either. I think one of the nights, I did wake up in like one of the first few nights. Uh, Brian woke me up accidentally, and then I had a lot of trouble getting back to sleep. But since then, I think I've gotten woke up like one time, and I pretty quickly got back to sleep. So if you have sleep problems, I would definitely suggest this. In addition to a good sleep hygiene routine, which is just kind of winding yourself down, doing kind of the same things to get yourself ready for bed, avoiding caffeine and those kinds of things, but you can Google that. So this um, person's channel is Tracks to Relax, Hypnosis, and Meditation. And I think it's like connected to some website or whatever, and I don't know if it's always the same guy, but I think that it is. And he's got lots of uh, videos on here, and I think that his the quality of the video, the videos being the audio, and his voice is very good because some of them on YouTube you'll find um, the like the quality of the voice isn't very good, or maybe they are talking too fast, or you're distracted by their accent or whatever. But anyway, this guy's an American, um, an American guy, and it's really good. So I would suggest that. And, uh, this whole 50 pounds in six months, I mean, to me, I mean, that's kind of unattainable now. I mean, it was, it was unattainable in six months, let alone five months now. And I'm right back where I was still a month ago when we talked about this. My kids and husband are at a birthday party, by the way, another birthday party, and I just put Lexi down for a nap, so that's why I was talking to you guys. Um, I just I get to the point where I'm just like, I cannot believe I was ever able to lose this kind of weight before. But there was definitely a resolve in me. I was less set in my ways. Um, I think I had less stress. And I'm not saying all that to make excuses. I'm just trying to pick apart the differences. Um, I am resolved, though. I'm not giving up. I'm not. I'm not happy being this weight, being this size, uh, being this out of shape. Uh, modeling this kind of behavior and and health and attitude for my girls um, so ultimately I'm not giving up um, and I really I really am resolved I absolutely am really resolved right now and I know that if you've stuck with it this long video 20 minutes in 
you might not think that, but I absolutely actually am resolved to making a change. Um, Brian's going to be working days all this month, and so it's going to give me a good opportunity to kind of cement more of a routine. And my routine plan, since the baby's still taking two naps and I can't get back to the Y right now uh, because I just won't have time because of her schedule, uh, that I am going to be getting up with the girls every day for school, obviously except for spring break, so that might put a little damper on things, but I'm going to make it work. Um, feed the baby and get out of here to take a walk with her, with the stroller, and then come back, put her down for her nap at 9.30, take a shower if I need it, and then have my time um, to do homework or whatever. I have a business statistics class that's starting this coming week, which looks very intensive that I'm trying not to freak out about. But that's the plan with that. And to try to continue to challenge my belief system and really test to see if these thoughts that I'm that I'm having about different experiences in my life are really true or not. I'm also thinking about giving up on the coffee because I started thinking about it. I've been drinking this decaf coffee with the uh, sugar-free sweetener and the sugar-free um, creamer which people have said the, that sugar-free stuff can actually increase sugar cravings and so on. But I started thinking that I've been drinking a lot of this coffee, um, anywhere from maybe two of these big cups to maybe even four or five a day, because I felt like it was substituting like a sweet, flavor for something else that was way worse than 15 calories that I was getting here. Um, but it started to dawn on me that maybe I am just training my taste buds and my mind to constantly be flooded with flavor, with a sweet flavor all the time. Uh, so then I started thinking maybe that wasn't such a terrific idea and maybe I need to stick with water. I also bought that Nutribullet a couple months ago that I had kind of given up on using because I was uh, making Nutriblast with um, protein powder and then my practitioner thinks that that was the reason why my testosterone was like 500 times higher than it should have been or 500% what it should have been or whatever. So I quit doing that, and then they just did blood tests, but I hadn't got the results of that yet because I haven't had um, any of the whey protein. So anyway, the whole point of that was to say that I do have that Nutribullet, so I need to make a plan on uh, poss possibly having at least one uh, Nutriblast a day. Or it wasn't a Nutriblast bullet that I got. It was a Nutra Ninja. Anyway, same difference. Uh, and just trying to stick to water and of course tracking the calories and um, restricting the calories. But again, the main issue is just control. Just telling myself no. Because during it, I am feeling a bit of joy, but I'm also feeling a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of failure, a lot of bad feelings, and then after, that's pretty much all it is. Um, I do get a boost in dopamine, of course, so I do have a little bit of a feel-good thing, but then I'm also feeling like really horrible, and um, I keep feeling like, oh, I'm going to start tomorrow, oh, I'm going to start tomorrow, so I'm going to eat, 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 eat today because tomorrow, you know, it's whatever. And I need to totally stop that line of thinking, okay? So, uh, I'm going to, I think, wean myself off the coffee because it has become such a habit at this point. I don't want to overwhelm myself too much. 
Um, but it's definitely going to be the other things that I talked about. Planning healthy meals, which I haven't been doing too bad at. Not eating out. Um, that's been a big problem too. So, yeah. All right, I've talked long enough. 25 minutes, I think, is the cutoff. So, I love you all for watching. Thank you for being here with me. Again, I'm sorry to keep on telling you the same sad story. One of these days, things are going to stick, and today is going to be that day. Damn it. Damn it. I'll probably be back later today. I think I'm going to make another little vlog to um, talk inspiration and coping skills. All right, so see you guys later. Bye.